Hi, my name is Elizabeth and I'm redoing this video because I started and I missed a lot of points on the last one I did. The other one is still available and um, I hope everybody's having a good day, whether you're watching it on YouTube, Instagram or Facebook. I'm going to be talking, like the topic says, um, I'm going to be talking about once a leper, once a leper. Now, uh, the story we're reading comes from 2 Kings chapter 5, and it's about a man called Naaman. I'm just going to go over some of things about Naaman that, was, that I could get from the story I read. He was a commander. Naaman was the commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was the captain of the host of the king of Aram, so he held a very good position. He was a great man. From the mere fact that he was a commander, he used to, he talked with the king. So it must have been great for you to have conversation with the king. He must have been a great person. He was a valiant soldier and he was a leader because he led the army. Naaman, from the story we read, um, read or if you read the story in 2 Kings chapter 5, Naaman was married. So he was loved. He had a home. He had a family. He was a nice guy because his, name, his maid was concerned about his welfare. welfare. So was the king. And to think that his maid was um, a, a slave that was brought from Israel. And she's the one that gave him the whole solution of going to see Elisha. For a lot of us, huh, you know, as bosses, God, oh, you know the, those bosses, those horrible bosses. I'm sure if a lot of you hear that something is wrong with them, you'd be rejoicing God. Lord have mercy. But it must have been nice because his maid was concerned about his welfare. It was a nice employer. And I'll say he I'll say he adopted people or because his his servants called him father. They didn't call him master, they called him father. So he must have taken them like his kids. He was very giving, appreciative, respectful, polite. If you check verses 16, 22, and 23. After all said and done, Naaman had that thing in his life. He was a leper. He was leprous. He had leprosy. His, and the name Naaman means pleasant, but there was nothing pleasant about his life. Yes, on the outward appearance, no, I won't even say, he had everything going for, for him. But when it came to his skin, he had leprosy. Now, I'm going to be talking a little bit about leprosy so we can liken it to um, what I'm going to be talking about. It says leprosy is, a, is an infection caused by a, bac is a bacterial infection. And leprosy eats the skin. It, um, it can cause, it affects your eyes, it affects your ears. And if left untreated, it can lead to disability of the person. Overcoming leprosy. Naaman, just like every one of us, represents the fallen man. Naaman, his name means pleasant, but there was really nothing pleasant about his life. Leprosy was a disease that isolated. He may have been loved and everything, but it gave him that isolation in himself. He was so worried about what, what, the, what the situation he had. Leprosy was incurable at the time, in the time of the Bible. He was, it was incurable. And it's, it's, it's amazing to see that Naaman was even married. So he may have contracted the leprosy before he got married or after he got married. Only God knows how. But in the Bible, people that were leprous were usually isolated. They were kept away. And just like sin, just like sin, leprosy eats the skin of the person while they are alive. It eats your flesh. It eats your soul. Sin eats your man in himself. Man, in, in man, man. When I talk of man, I mean man, woman, humanity. We are, we, we are created in a fallen state, and living in sin. Now, um, there's no talk about Naaman being shrewd, wicked. From every account, he was a very good person. He was morally upright. He was nice. He was humble. He took advice. He was a giving person. He had good connections. The king liked him. Similarly. Sin, just the falling stage of man, state of man, eats man, eats away a person, and if not treated, can affect the heart and cause disability. Now, this is a story of all men. The Bible says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
says if we say we are without sin, we make him a liar and the truth is not in us. Let me quickly tell, tell you the story. So Naaman had leprosy. I've told you a little bit about him. <clears throat> and his maid um, told her mistress, the um, Naaman's wife, that I know of a prophet called Elisha. If you go and meet him, he can help you. He can heal you. So Naaman went to the king and the king gave him a letter and said, go ahead, go. And Naaman rushed, you know, to where Elisha was. And when he got there, Elisha didn't even bother coming out. Elisha just sent his servant, Gehazi, and told him, go and dip yourself seven times in the river Jordan. And, this, and when he heard that, he was very upset and he left. He went back home and the maid told him, Master, what happened? He said, can you imagine this is what he said? And there are better rivers in, in, from where I am. Why would he ask me to dip myself seven times in the river Jordan? But she said, if he had told you to do something more complex, wouldn't you have done it? So Naaman, I guess, having no other choice, obeyed, went back, dipped himself seven times in the river Jordan. And when he came out, his flesh was like that of a newborn. I'm going to liken Naaman. Naaman is the falling man. If you're talking of broken English, Naaman is like Naaman, which is this is man. Na Naaman represents the falling state of man. It doesn't matter how morally upright you are, how nice you are. If you are, the moment you're born into this world, you are in a falling state, just like Naaman was. Pleasant, but in a falling state. Amen. And um, the if you if I, I've quote some Bible scriptures in Leviticus seventeen eleven, it says the blood makes atonement for a person's life. It says without the shedding of blood, there was no remission of sin. That is why Jesus had to come as a sacrificial lamb and shed his blood. The importance of Jesus coming to earth was to shed his blood on the cross of Calvary to cleanse us of every act of unrighteousness. Naaman represents a fallen man, like, uh, like I said earlier. Leprosy is always symbolic of sin. The traits of sin, it's incurable. It was incurable. It, it wastes away your flesh. It kills you slowly while you're alive. You may be just like sin. Sin is pleasurable. Oh, yeah. And everything. But it wastes away a person's life. Naaman's like, uh, problem was sin. And like Naaman's leprosy is like sin. And sin cannot be prayed away. That's why Elisha sent Gehazi. It doesn't matter. When you hear the story of salvation, it doesn't matter who it comes from. It, so, some of us think till we, till, till we accept um, salvation, maybe when a big um, man of God or a pastor is, is preaching, it, that's when it makes an impact. It's not the prayer they pray. It's the blood that was shed. So it doesn't matter who the vessel is that you hear a message from. Just like the instruction through Elisha was sent through Gehazi. And the, 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 furthermore, the direction came from just a servant girl. You never know where your salvation, your day of salvation will come. Where the day of your solution will come. <clears throat> seven times. Why seven times? Seven times represents perfection. Seven in the Bible represents completeness perfection so like seven days in a week it represents perfection so if Naaman had done it less than seven times it would not have worked it shows that when you dip yourself in the blood of Jesus he washes you completely it says in um um second kings 5 14 in dipping himself he was restored like a young boy he could have just said his skin was healed he was made whole like he says it's in so many places in the bible but it says he was restored like a young boy Hence the term born again, I guess. The whole essence of Christianity has nothing to do with um, oh, um, religion, uh, sorry, religious activities and everything. The whole essence and the most important thing about Jesus coming to earth was his shedding of his blood on the cross of Calvary to cleanse us from our sins. Amen. <clears throat> One wonders why Elisha did not collect a gift from Naaman. Because Elisha knew that the gift of the cleansing of Naaman was free. Just like the gift of salvation and the shedding of the blood of Jesus for us is completely free. It's nothing we can buy. No one can take credit for it. Yes, maybe someone, the, the Bible says Paul planted, Apollos watered, but God brought about the, brings about the increase. It doesn't matter who has told you to at some point in your life. The Bible says God has set eternity in the hearts of men. Sometimes it's that eternity that we are searching for. That thing. Eternity is it's like, it, it, it's like endless. A lot of people feel that void, that endlessness. 
in their hearts and god has put it there so we can come looking for it but most times we feel that having money having prestige have being married or something can cure it and the, the 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 truth of the matter is if wealth if marriage if anything could take away that void Naaman would would have used his money to to heal himself or something just like man money wealth nothing can cleanse us from our sins but the blood of Jesus, but that precious blood that was shed, which is the importance. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your position is. Yes, you may be highly placed. You may have everything going for you. People calling you father. You may have servants, have kids, have everything. Be connected to highly placed people. But there's just that thing. Sometimes it's that emptiness, that void, that eternity. That, that endlessness that God has placed in our hearts. That make people that, that, that have a lot of money take their own lives. Because nothing they discover that nothing can satisfy it. So I'd just like to encourage you. You may have heard the salvation story. You may have heard the salvation message countless times, but it doesn't make sense to you. Just like Naaman, you say, I'm dead, better, reverse, where I'm coming from. And the other things, I've tried this religion, I've tried that, but it just, just doesn't feel. I would, I'd like to encourage you today. Try the blood of Jesus, which cleanses us from all our sins, who sheds which who the blood that was shed that washes us from every act of unrighteousness and for some of us um what Naaman is experiencing Naaman leprosy is an outward thing some of us the the things we are battling with yes you may have you may have come to know the lord or you were in the lord and you left because of issues the things we are battling with are just not, are not things that are physically seen like Naaman's leprosy was. It might just be emotional struggles, psychological struggles, the pain, just different things you've experienced in life. Nothing. It's like life is just bland. Nothing is giving you satisfaction. Nothing is bringing you joy. I'd like to encourage you and remind you of the efficacy and the power in the blood of Jesus. I'd like to encourage you to plead the blood of Jesus over every situation that you're going through, over the pain that you may be going through. Like Naaman, it doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how mor morally upright or morally sound you are. It doesn't matter how well connected you are. It doesn't matter if the message comes through a servant, if it comes to a servant girl, what vessel the Lord uses. I'd just like to encourage you, if you've heard this and there's something tugging at your heart, I'd like to invite you to accept the, the death of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, the blood that was shed. He says, freely we have received, freely he has given us this blood. It's not by, by anything anyone can do, not by praying from anybody special, not by any um, rituals or religious you know, things. Just accepting that blood. And accepting that that blood can cleanse us. And building a relationship with God. Because Naaman, after he left... He acknowledged to Elisha that I know now that your God of Israel is the true God. He acknowledged it. It's about building a relationship, being cleansed from our, our sins. I'd just like to pray. If you are that person, just like Naaman, you have, it seems that everything is going well for you. You are good. Everybody likes you. Everybody loves you. You are surrounded by people, but there's just this isolation in you. There's this, in, this loneliness in you. Or for you, it might be that everything is not going well for you, unlike Naaman. Still, the same blood available for cleansing of anybody, in, or, or, or of, of people like Naaman, or whatever situation, that blood is available to us, to all. It's been freely given. Please, I'll just encourage you to bow your heads and say, Father, I know that... I, I, I may not understand, just like Naaman, the importance of the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary to cleanse me for my blood, for my sins. Father, but today in faith and in obedience, just like Naaman obeyed, I'm obeying and I'm coming before you and I say, please have mercy, cleanse me with your blood in the name of Jesus. Father, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Help me to have a relationship with you. Help me to know you in Jesus' name. And for some out there, it might be that you're going through things. Everybody around you, things, they, they assume everything is fine. But you're going through a turmoil in your soul. You may even know the Lord and you've you, you just forgotten some important things. 
something very important like the blood of Jesus can set you free from whatever stronghold, whatever mindset, whatever problems you are having. I would just like to pray, Father, for as many of us that are going through one storm, one problem, more hurt, heartache, pain. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Please, by your blood, wash away every pain, every hurt. Every Father, like God, fill every void by your precious with your precious blood. Fill every void with your precious blood. In Jesus' name. I'd just like to encourage you. I, uh, if you have any questions, you can direct message me on Facebook or Instagram. Or if you have my number, you can send me a text. If you want to call, um, you can send your number and I can give you a call. I pray this message blesses somebody. And I just want to remind you that there's power in the blood of Jesus to cleanse us from our fallen state as man. To give us solution to whatever problem it is we are facing. And I pray today that even as you've listened, even as you've... Um, uh, you've prayed that whatever it is that you're going through, that God will sort the situation out for you. Thank you very much. Once again, my name is Elizabeth Fan, and um, I hope this blesses you. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.